like to share a memory or had something? I don't know how you follow that personally. <laughs> Betty was born August the 17th, 1928. She might not want me to tell you all that, but anyway, to Clarence Steele and Mary Bowman Steele and Betty Lou Steele Coates Reese at 87 passed away last Thursday, March, uh, May the 19th in Rogers. And her beautiful soul went to be with the Lord. At 5.55, I mentioned that time because the number five is God's grace. And her moment of departure was grace three times. And also that number three symbolizes the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. She knew them well. And truly her passing into eternal life was a very special event indeed. She was born in Lima, Ohio, was a wonderful lady, very loved by our family, it was, as it was evident by her eulogies today. Her family and friends loved her, but she did not suffer. She went peacefully. As you know, Alzheimer's is a terrible disease, and Betty suffered that for a long time. It takes one's memory, and then the familiar faces that she's known for all these years become strangers. But they meet new friends every day. And I know that Betty must have enjoyed that as she met new friends every day. Up until the morning of her death and her life was a beautiful smile. She was always cheerful. She was meeting a friend, a new friend, every day. And isn't that just like the merciful God that we serve, to let one die without grudges, without burdens or cares, without sorrow or regrets. If there is a positive in Alzheimer's, I would have to agree with that, wouldn't you? <clears throat> Though the disease took her memory, one thing remained constant, the love for her family and friends that they had for her, you see, Betty may not have known you when you went in to see her, but you knew her and you loved her. And that's the most important thing that we can remember about Betty. I remember hearing about a little old gentleman that when he was asked why he continued to visit the nursing home every day after his wife of 50 years had Alzheimer's. Someone said, she doesn't know you, so why do you bother? And he said, but I know who she is, and that will never change. And that's the way it is. I knew Betty through my friendship with Linda and a group of women called the Seroptimus. <laughs> And every year this group of ladies would host a tamarind show, and you saw that as Angie was standing up there beside the car in her queen outfit, probably for a parade um, at Rockin' Country, that's what we called that. But Betty loved that event, and she especially loved the music. She loved life, and you could tell it by the big smile that she had. Y'all, that's what we'll remember about her. When I think of Betty, I think of that big old smile, that personable character, and just that friendly person that she was. She was a loving mother and grandmother and great-grandmother. I'd like to read to you a tribute that Linda wrote on Facebook about her mom for Mother's Day this year, just 12, year, 12 days before Betty took her last breath and crossed over into glory. Linda's thoughts, when I read them, really touched me that day. She said, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I miss you terribly. I know I can come see you, but you don't know me or any of us. You can't talk anymore or can't hear, but you still have that beautiful smile. 
I miss watching days of our lives every day with you. We did that for 50 years. I miss your laugh. I miss talking to you, taking you to Branson, and watching you fully enjoy the country music. You loved country music. I miss your love for animals. I miss just being able to talk to you about anything. I would love to sit and talk to you now. But I know that you can't. Mom, you always was and still are a beautiful, classy lady. Your friends and family miss you, too. I miss the fact that I didn't dance with you as much as you wanted me to. That was silly of me. You loved to jitterbug and always wanted to dance. And I'm so sorry I didn't do that more with you. Alzheimer's is a terrible disease. I so hated leaving you in the nursing home. I guess the only blessing for me was that you really didn't know where you were. You still made friends, smiled, and everyone loves you. And when you introduced me as the girl next door that you grew up with, that was okay. Because I knew that you were content and happy. It's selfish of me that I can thankfully say that I love you and I'm glad that you are who you are. I love you, Mom. I always will. What a touching tribute. <clears throat> You'll have to forgive me if I get emotional. Some people think that that's not necessary out of a pastor, but I don't agree with that. Betty is predeceased by her parents, her daughter, Cindy Reese Curtis, Wayne Reese, and son-in-law, Roy Smith. She's survived by her son, Gary, and wife, Susan Coates, grandson, Derek, granddaughter, Jesse, and husband, Brian Collins, great-granddaughters, Riley and Kaylin, and great-grandson, Colton, all of Columbus, Ohio. Her daughter, Linda Coates Smith of Rogers, grandson, Jason, and wife, Stacy Smith, great-granddaughter, Kirsty Smith of Cabot, Great-grandson, Joey Smith of Fort Carson, Colorado. Granddaughter, Angela, and her husband, Ryan Rutherford. And great-grandsons, Stephen and Marcus Rutherford of Benton. She's survived by her son, Randy of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Granddaughter, Amy, and her husband, Jesse Horniker. Great-grandson, Jeffrey, and great-granddaughter, Madeline of Topeka, Kansas. Grandson Jeremy Weldon and wife Amanda. Great granddaughters Lauren and Taylor of Centerton, Arkansas. Granddaughter Dinah and husband Daniel Day. Great granddaughter Amelia of New Orleans. <coughs> granddaughters <coughs> Kelly Davis of New Orleans and Deborah Davis of Tulsa. And Cindy and Phil's son Sean Curtis of Fayetteville, Arkansas. What a wonderful legacy. Beautiful legacy. I'm so proud to know all of you. If you knew Betty, you knew all of you. <laughs> she was just one of those kind of people. Y'all, we don't fully understand when God's Word says that we should rejoice at the death of a saint and mourn the life of a newborn baby that's born in such a world as this. But I'd like to offer you comfort today from the words of Apostle Paul from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18. And he says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He wasn't calling this ignorant. He's saying for those that don't know that these people that are uh, in death right now, as we see it, they're living life eternal with the Lord. And he wants us to have that hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, if we're alive when the rapture takes place, when the Lord comes back on that eastern cloud, we're not going to keep those that have already gone on to be in glory. We're not going to keep them from seeing him too. <clears throat> Just because that they are in death. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then which we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And he ends with this, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. I want you all to find comfort today knowing that Miss Betty is with the Lord. That she knew him. She resides in that place called heaven. And for all of us that profess <coughs> and know that our faith is in Jesus Christ, we're going to see Betty again someday. And I would hope that if there's one in this congregation of people that doesn't profess Jesus as her personal Savior, as Betty did, as we met that you would make that election sure so that we can be with her again someday. I look forward to that. I know that she has kept them angels' ears busy talking to them. And probably her mom and dad and all the people that she knows that has gone on to be with the Lord. What a glorious time that's going to be for all of us when we get to do that. Betty had a love for animals, as we know about, and your memorial contributions can be made to the Dolmist Animal Shelter. The family wanted me to be sure and let you all know that. And let me mention that if you want to make online donations, go to www.dolmistanimalshelter.org and click on the donations, but be sure and put in memory of Betty Reeks. So, and I know that she would be honored for you to do that. She would probably slap me if I hadn't said all of that to you because animals were very important to her. And I know the family would love that for you to be able to. The family would like to invite you to go to the Rogers American Legion building for lunch directly afterwards. Uh, we're going to have them line up and greet them and spend a little time here, but then we're going to go to the Rogers American Legion building. You've got a map in your memorial folder uh, that tells you how to get there. And then after lunch, uh, she welcomes you to her home where you all can fellowship more. And I ask that the Lord would bless you all as you travel after this weekend. If you would just bow your heads. Thank you, Lord, for such a time as this. Thank you, Father, that many knew you. And that we have that blessed hope that we know where she is today. Rejoicing on the streets of God. And Lord, I pray that if there would be one here that does not know you as their personal Savior, that they would make that election sure, Father, that they would say, yes, Jesus, I don't understand it all, but I do want to be with you. I want to be with my mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother. I want my friend. I want to, to be there with you. And so would you help me, Father? I trust you that Jesus is alive and well. And Lord, I ask that you would go with us, thank God, and direct us, that you would bless the food, that you would bless the hands that prepared the food, that you would bless those that have contributed to this family and loved them in whatever way that they have done, Father. Thank you for every picture, every song that was sung, everything, Father. We give you love and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We can have the family, Gary and Angie, Randy.